how to use your 401k to help purchase a home. Ryan Taylor with the Achieve Real Estate team in Lansing, Michigan, and today we're talking about how to use your 401k to purchase your home. So there's a couple of different options. One is a withdrawal and one's a loan, and there's a big difference. So the first question you have to ask is, do you still work at the company that is providing the 401k? Because if you don't work there anymore, you now have met what's called a triggering event in the 401k world, and that means a loan is no longer available, and now you have to take a withdrawal. So let's back up and pretend that you actually still work at the employer that is providing you a 401k. But when it comes to 401k withdrawal options, there's usually a withdrawal or a loan. A withdrawal usually means you're taking the money out of the account and not going to put it back in. So what are the drawbacks to this? You have to look at that money as additional income when you report your taxes for that calendar year. And if you're under 59 and a half when you take that money out, you'll incur what's called an early withdrawal penalty, which is a 10% penalty on those funds. You don't face that when you take the money out, but that penalty occurs during tax time when you're filing your taxes. One way that you can take a withdrawal from a 401k account when you're still working there is if you're over 59 and a half. Once you meet that 59 and a half age threshold, you've met that triggering, that triggering event which allows you to take an in-service withdrawal to take that money out of the account. This means you've met the age requirement to be able to take a withdrawal, usually depending on the plan, so depending on your employer's rules that they have set, that determines how many withdrawals you might be able to take and how much you can take from the account. Now the other option, if you're still working with the employer, is a loan. So usually there's two different kinds of loans. There's a general purpose loan, and then there's a residential loan. A general purpose loan, you can take it out at any time, and usually the loan term is anywhere from one to five years. So that means you have one to five years to pay that back into your account. Payroll will set this up so that the amount will go back into your 401k with every single paycheck, similar to how the money gets contributed in the first place into your 401k account. So the payroll company is responsible for facilitating these payments back into the account. That's the general purpose loan. So the better option would be the residential loan, which basically expands that time frame from the one to five year for the general purpose. This allows you to change that time frame to pay back to 10 to 20 years as opposed to one to five. To be able to use that option, you usually have to show them a purchase agreement proving that you actually are going to live in this property and occupy it as your principal residence. The advantage to the longer time frame is that the payments are separated over a longer time, just like when you get a mortgage and you spread that over 30 years. So that's less money coming out of your paycheck to go back into your 401k because the loan from a 401k you're paying back to yourself. So there's interest rates tied to these 401k loans, but they're not bank loans. You're basically paying prime plus one to 2% but all of that money goes back to you. It doesn't go to a bank, it doesn't go to the 401k company, you're paying yourself back. So that seems great, right? You're paying yourself back. And that's how it's sold to you as a benefit of using a 401k loan to take money out to use it to buy a home. But what are the drawbacks of that that you usually don't hear? Anytime you take money out of a 401k, there's an opportunity cost involved. So that just means Say you have $100,000 in your 401k and you take 20 out to use as a down payment on a home. You just removed $20,000 from that account that no longer is gonna be a part of any compounding interest over time. So, unless that house that you're buying is going to appreciate over time, which we never want to guarantee, but for the most part we can count on for the long term, you're essentially removing money from that account and you're impacting your own compound interest over time. But the next question about 401k loans is, is there a taxable event? Now, do you have to pay this back or does it impact your taxes? You do have to pay it back according to the rules of your retirement plan, but you're paying it back to yourself into your 401k. Now, what if you stop paying on that loan? Let's pretend you took out that $20,000 and you never paid any of that back into your 401k account. That $20,000 now gets added to your taxable income for that calendar year. So there's a very good chance that you could get bumped up to another tax bracket, which is one of the downsides of not paying a loan back. The only time this really happens where you take money out of your 401k using a loan 
where it becomes a taxable event is when you take the loan out while you're working there and at some point throughout paying that loan back, you stop working there, maybe you go work somewhere, somewhere else. This creates a triggering event, like I mentioned before, and that loan now becomes taxable. You can make special arrangements where you continue to pay back that loan and avoid any taxable event, but that is your responsibility as a 401k plan participant to make sure that arrangement is set up to basically ensure that your loan is serviced properly to avoid that taxable event. I hope this helped you understand a little bit more about how to use a 401k for a home purchase. It can be a great option, but definitely pay attention to the drawbacks that can be a part of the whole process. Thanks for watching and stay tuned for the next video.